you're back with things we need to know about 2012. Uh, right now we're looking at things we need to know. Oh, we... uh... You're back with things we need to know about 2012. Today, Jason Bryant at unscrew.co.nz is back in the studio looking at things we need to know about wine in 2012. And last time he was in, we were testing... Uh, or tasting the Pinot Gris from Bannockburn, wasn't it? Where else was that? It was the Devil Staircase, if I remember rightly. Yeah, and that's the wine that you think, or the um, the varietal that's going to be hot in 2012. And we're going to open up another bottle of Pinot Gris. Uh, later on. Later on. But first up, what is not going to be hot in 2012 when it comes to wine? Trying to find the next grape that's going to get us off the ventilator. <laughs> okay, so do you think there's some, some wine growers out there right now going, okay, economic situation's still not good, let's come up with something new and funky? A- absolutely, and so with the recession kind of drives innovation, and we see that through all sectors of the economy, wh- one of the things that I think we need to, and I said about it for Marlborough earlier, mm. um, in a previous um, show, that we re- I saw them focusing and refocusing on what they were really good at, there is a tendency to, to try to throw everything in the ground to see what grows and see what we can make rather than kind of tailoring what we are doing already and making that better. What's an example of, say, something the, the last year? Oh, um, kind of, there's been Grunewald Lena, which for me, I love it as a great variety. And it, but it just came at the wrong time, and I, and I saw people trying to cl- clutch at straws, trying to throw that in the ground and make it. And there's about 10 or 15, 20 wineries now doing, I've got to say, a very, very respectable job of making Gruner. Um, but it became fashionable over in the States where they called it groovy, and then everybody started, oh, let's, we, we've got to diversify. And everybody's being told to diversify, throw things in the ground. Yeah. and. Um, but isn't the problem, though, with the wine industry in New Zealand is that New Zealanders only think that we grow Chardonnay, um, uh, Pinot Gris, uh, Pinot Noir, um, Sauvignon Blanc, and and uh, maybe some Merlot in there. And, and yeah. We, we don't, and if we see another um, grape variety on a bottle, it's kind of, well, that's weird. I don't know where that comes from. That's strange. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so one of the things that we've not been very good at, and I think we'll continue not to be very good at, is telling our story. Mm. That's what's cold or what's not hot is that, that we, we still have this even in the wine industry we have this tall poppy syndrome we don't want to be overtly saying look at this great aren't we doing really really well um, champion and this grape that grape and every other grape we, we, we tend to not do that very well mm. um, so what we tend to do is we try we, we look for other things to do and kind of one of them has been kind of throwing all these great varieties in the ground yeah. not telling the customer and consumer about them and educating and so that's what what's not hot yeah. is our education from the wineries about these individual great varieties haven't we also done some fairly funky things with combining great varieties and then putting them in a bottle and marketing them in a certain way yeah. <laughs> well we made sparkling sauvignon blanc which <laughs> yeah you know Okay, Jack, uh, how, many, how much Sauvignon Blanc have we got out the back? Yeah. I know, let's add bubbles. People <laughs> drink, love bubbles. Let's, let's do that. And yeah. a lot of it has been absolute junk. Okay. And it's sweet and it's just bad fruit. And there are only a few good examples of, of sparkling Sauvignon. Um, Mount Riley, which has had a long history of doing it, and St. Clair is not too bad. Mm. Uh, the rest of it I've tasted so far has okay. just been... Dreadful. So what's hot is Frankenstein. What's a hot, not hot is a Frankenstein wine. Yeah, exactly. In Blending the we've yeah. seen Sauvignon Gris and Sauvignon Blanc mm. um, turned into uh, a, a wine. Pinot Gris and Sauvignon Blanc blended mm. turned into a wine. Everything's blended with Sauvignon Blanc, yeah. right? Just to try to get rid of it. Uh, well, we don't need to. We need to tell the world that we are making. We're back on the world stage. We're making a damn hot product that everybody needs to drink but right now it seems that Sauvignon Blanc is a a cold not hot kind of grape variety when it's the backbone of our industry Okay, back to what's hot for 2012 it is Pinot Gris Pinot Gris Gris is hot as you said last time and from Central right okay Central uh, Central, with with Jason Bryant at uh, unscrew.co 
Pinot.nz and you brought in another bottle of yep. um, Pinot Gris. What is this? As I said on the last show, it's Rabbit Ranch. One of the most easily identifiable wines that New Zealand produces. It's got the rabbit ears on the collar. And they're renowned for their um, Pinot Noir. Mm-hmm. This is a Pinot Gris. Central has got some a great future for Pinot Gris and the aromatics. And and I think that that um, we will be able to see in this bottle. Thank you. Cheers. Just how good a future and bright a future is. A lot. There's been, a, as I said on the last episode, there's been a lot of complaint about the Pinot Gris about it being sugar water and it, its style has not been refined and defined by the the regions. Mm-hmm. Now I think that we're starting to see winemakers understand Pinot Gris, and so we're starting to make really, really sexy Pinot Gris. Okay, well, let's get our nose into this one. It's a bit more... Compared to the Devil's Tale Coast, which we had on the last show, this is a bit more refined. It's a bit more... Less obvious on the nose. Slightly caramel? There is a, a, a slight caramel, caramelised character on the nose. Mm. But we are getting that, I can smell that fruit sweetness carried, lifted slightly possibly by the alcohol, because alcohol tends to be sweet as well. And, and the important thing, not to be intimidated by this whole just description of wine or anything, but just stick your nose into the damn thing and, and, and say what you think, right? Abs- absolutely. Well, my nose is different to your nose, which is mm. different to your mum's nose, which is different to my mum's nose. That's why when I see, Every car- note. That's why when I see caramel, you were like, oh, yeah, maybe... No, no, uh, and <laughs> wine tasting can be incredibly suggestive. Yeah. That as soon as I say something, you go, oh, Straight. yeah, I can see that mm. in that wine, and mm. I can smell that. As well as what I tend to tell people, draw on your experiences of youth because they are the memories mm. that are imprinted on your brain. They're the senses that are imprinted on your brain, and only you live them. Yeah. So the sweets that I had in the UK that I sometimes see in wine may only pertain to the, the people who watch mm. and listen to me from the UK. You may see something else in a wine mm. that's just as valid, just as important, because it's you that's got to drink it. Toffee pops. Toffee pops. Right. See, I, I, I get this earthiness, slaty, minerally kind of character that I think that you should get in Central Targo wines, mm. because it is an incredibly attractive kind of piece of land down there with this really rough, raw, mountainous oh, landscape. Ma- majestic. It is majestic. Yeah. If we want to go way over there <laughs> to um, to this beautiful kind of like flat pasture as well and then you get this slaty kind of character just falling from the hills and mountains. Right. I'm, I'm convinced to take a sip now. Yeah, okay. And that's what we should find in our wine. We should get that steely, <laughs> slaty character in our wine. Earthiness. Wow, that is really, really, really nice. I like that, lovely. There's this really racy, spicy acid that runs through this. Almost like a, right a lime. Lime, lime. Then, more mm. lime than lemon. Yeah. But it, I, I, I like to do use my hands and, and gesticulate about wine. It's pulled in. It, it doesn't allow the wine to go just really flabby in your mouth mm. and disintegrate into nothing, and just disappear. It's pulled into the side, and so it makes you have a little pucker there with the racy acidity. Yeah, it does. Mm. But it carries on from this really kind of vibrant fruit at the front mm. all the way to the back. Mm. And there's a little bit of hint of almost saline at the back. It's lovely. What would you pair it with? Uh, uh, so this is the thing. I'm going to go shellfish with this. Mm-hmm. Or, and some cheeses. And maybe just use it as an aperitif as well. Kind of get your guests around for dinner. Yeah. I said this about kind of Gruner Veltliner, and I see these two in a fairly similar vein. They're really nice aromatically, um, and you can offer them as a as a wine standalone wine. You don't need to necessarily pair it with anything, but it will go with a bit of dessert. It will certainly go with a bit of shellfish. It's got that crisp, mm. kind of steely, racy acid with it as well. So yeah, anything like that. A bit of salmon. Get a a, a piece of trifle. Yeah, and, trifle and, would yeah. and your rabbit ranch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, S- sounds fairly good. So I mean, that's that's pretty hot, and Central's uh, definitely the place to to be making this kind of wine. Great.
Great. So Pinot Gris is hot in 2012. So wine. That's one of the things you need to think about wine in 2012. Jason, really a pleasure having you in and um, and tasting these wines with you. Uh, more at uh, unscrew.co.nz. Also Jason underscore Bryant on Twitter, and also do do a research for uh, you on Facebook as well. Under what? Under New Zealand wine reviews. Great. Or NZ wine reviews. Thanks for dropping on by and telling us what is hot and not in wine in 2012. I've really enjoyed these episodes. Thank you very much.